Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 333 with Nanolids at Dawn. Before I start, well, Zero K exhibition matches is what we're looking at now. But before I start, gotta point out that the monthly 1v1 tournament, or the monthly tournament, which is 1v1 because it's the November tournament, which got delayed a couple of weeks because of the organizers not being available, will be this Saturday, December 12th, 2015, at 10 a.m. UTC. So convert that to your local time. I will put a link in the description on YouTube, so you can go follow that link. And don't worry if you don't think you're going to win, because just play. I mean, it, you'll get experience. You'll get at least three games in because of the format. So it will be still valuable experience. And who knows? You may win. There's no reason to think you won't, because I'm actually not sure who's in it right now. But yeah, so that's the thing. Give it a shot. See what happens. So that is on the 12th. Right now is a game between North Chilean G and Dorsch on Dune Patrol, a map which I don't recall actually showing up too much. This map, this lake in the center is more important than it looks. It's also much bigger than it looks. It looks fairly small, but no, it's actually... I would recommend going for either Amphib to go across the center or some kind of vehicles just to be able to traverse quickly enough. Hovercraft don't work as well as the used one here. I've actually... One of the downsides is this area here, this ridge, can be a bit troublesome for vehicles. A lot of people do go hovercraft. They were, or at least were, fairly popular here. I tried them the other day, and the pathing on these hills just killed it. So, yeah, the center area being water. And as you can see, North Chilean G going for gunships. Dorsch going for Cloakybot, which hasn't been a very popular choice recently. It's moderately solid, and it's not like it can't go through the center, but it's just... Not as effective as Amphib. There's actually some, I think some areas here, but can't. Let me not know. Looks like everything's shallow enough. But overall, yeah, I would recommend something that can deal with water well. At any rate, Dorsch starting off by figuring out there is a gunship plane coming in here. Is there just the two defenders? Now, these are Banshees, by the way. Banshees don't really fall to defenders that easily. They have. 860 health, which is a fair amount. That's what two defender volleys. I think between the two defenders, that Banshee, yeah, even then it required extra support. Dealing with the Banshee is a lot like dealing with pretty much any other raider. They actually don't fly that far off the ground. So if you get a decent riot unit, I'm not sure if warriors work. I know Stardust turrets work. And I think Gremlins might be fine. And yeah, 61 damage per second. That's not great. There's a lot of time there. So overall, you aren't going to be wanting to use traditional anti-air solutions against the Banshee just because they're just going to stay there. They're going to tank it, and they're going to deal a lot of damage in the meantime. So I I would have to experiment a bit myself. Banshees are a little weird. They don't quite fit in as, as air, and they aren't as susceptible to anti-air as one might think. Not that, as you can see, it's bad. It's just gremlins are okay. I know for spiders, for instance, you want to use Venom Redback. Like, don't even bother using Tarantulas. Use Venom Redback. It works beautifully. But we're not watching spiders here. We're watching Cloaky. And Cloaky versus Gunship, a little bit more straightforward. Gremlins are cheap enough that it's worth it. Gremlins point out are 150, min or 150 metal. I have been blank Starcraft recently. And Banshees are 220 metal. So Banshees are a little bit more expensive. So, whereas a Tarantulas in spider by Factory are 400 metal. It takes a lot longer, naturally, for them to pay for themselves at that point. Anyway, gremlins can work just because they are a bit faster in their fire raid. So, I hadn't really thought about that. But Dorsh is not wrong. I, I wouldn't recommend a warrior just because warriors are slow and easily countered by basically anything with decent range. They aren't terrible, necessarily, but they aren't... There's usually a better option. Especially when you're trying to respond to something like this. Yeah, unless, you're, unless you can place the warriors in a position where they can just deal with stuff. And against air? Not likely. So, Gremlin's the best to work with. North Chilean G adding in a light vehicle factory. Having finished what they needed to do with the Banshees. Actually, not really. They haven't done that much. Banshees haven't even made cost yet. It's like, that's 600, well, almost 700 metal there, and they killed what? Well, they lost one. They've killed one metal extractor. I mean, that's actually not that much. Dorsh is doing fairly well right now. North Chilean G could explode quite quickly using this light vehicle factory. 
And what are they going to go for? Well, another reason why I wouldn't recommend using warriors in this map, just, it's the size. There's the size, there's no real choke points. Yeah, gremlins, just go with gremlins with the anti-air. Unfortunately, Dorsh appears to be investing, oh, they're over-investing into anti-air. Way over-investing. Scorch is coming in for North Chilean G very quickly. But Dorsh does not need that much anti-air. And that's, that's a bit of a read. Like, really, it's just, when is your opponent going to switch off? That's always the tough thing about fighting an air start or a gunship start. When is my opponent going to switch off? Knowing when that is and knowing that you have enough to deal with whatever they throw at you. And unfortunately, those, all oh, those gremlins going in for an assault, I guess they're expecting more and more air. Nope. They didn't even manage to stop that crane, sadly. That crane there, man, if they had, if they had hit that crane... But it's going to take the Northeast pretty much with impunity. Now, just to see, what radar do we have here? Dorsh has no idea what's going on there. North Chilean G... Well, if more for the fact that the Gremlins are cloaked. The Gremlins are cloaked, which is the only reason North Chilean G does not know they're there. And now, North Chilean G realizes the error. Fortunately, the Defender's being of some use, but... Having just expended their entire volley, that's basically it. Dorsh, right now, pretty desperate. Getting a couple sides up. Not going to help against the Banshees. Will help against the Scorchers. They two-shot Scorchers. So, yeah. Oh, not quite two-shot. Not quite two-shot. They actually three-shot Scorchers. It's really close. And Razor up, which is not really the best... That's the thing. Razor isn't really a great choice. It's an okay choice, but it's not the best choice. The Gremlins are really the thing that pushed those Banshees away. They could have taken out the Razor. The Razor really doesn't deal enough damage for it to be a threat. Now, on the other hand, like I said, Stardust will work beautifully, and the other one that works beautifully, I guess... I'm not really sure what else. I don't think Hacksaws would work. Chainsaws would work, but Chainsaws are really expensive. Defenders are are not that great just due to the fact that they require so many... Like, seven Defender missiles? That's two whole volley. Like, that's two turrets completely expending their entire volley, and then another turret firing off a last support missile. To kill off a Banshee. To kill off one Banshee. Let alone a group of three. So Banshee Scorch coming in here. Raider group coming in from North Chilean G over to the southwest. And that is going to be a problem. Very shortly. Probably once... Uh, how many... I would expect now. And Saiyus have revealed themselves. Not doing too much damage unfortunately. Getting rid of a couple defenders. But not much in the way of follow-up forces. It looks like it was a mistake by Dorsch. And there we go. There is half a dozen Scorchers for the assault. Dorsch is going to be taking a lot of damage. Good. Well, okay, reclaim. Not unfortunately enough production. This is a huge thing. Dorsch just realizing they're accessing, pushing them into production. But unfortunately, it's too late for it to be of any use. And this is the killing blow. North Chilean G is going to run into the main base and should be able to tear everything apart. And here comes the Warriors. Moment of truth for the Warriors. Which... Yeah, like I said, they're not great. And can they not hit Banshees? Yeah, they can't hit Banshees. Okay. Yeah. So they're fighting against the Banshees. That almost worked like a flak can, which Cobra might work too. Come to think of it. Cobra, the flak gun might be okay against Banshees. Yeah, this is the problem for Warriors here. Range and Banshee speed. And this this is game. Dorsh is going to throw in the towel right now, I'm sure. They still have their commander up. They could pretty quickly rebuild. I mean, they're, they're accessing and both resources. They could set up a caretaker instead of a factory, get it up in half a minute, but that's not really enough. Dorsh expanding to the southwest. That northeast is also built up thanks to that crane not dying. And Dorsh without their main base, they haven't got much. Desperately saying up what they can, but North Chilean G is well aware that their commander is there. They know it's their commander, they know where it is, they know that there are metal extractors being built up. Hovercraft factory being built up, unfortunately that's not quick enough. Oh, never mind. I didn't notice. They have Carver's and Emiliath. They have very nearly a caretaker within themselves. Okay. Good call to Dorsha on that commander. I uh, don't agree with having Morph, though. They really needed that reserve resource to get that Hovercraft factory up as quickly as possible. Even with the Nanolith, it's not worth it. They don't have the build power to make it work. Although, okay, the reclaim wasn't a bad idea. Still, they just don't have the build power for that. Even with this stuff in storage. But it looks like it won't matter. Because, honestly, it won't matter. I mean, I don't mean to be rude, but it's... This is kind... There isn't much they can easily do here. Well, I guess the hills weren't as bad as I thought. There isn't much they can easily do here. There really isn't. 
They're going for Scalpels, which are powerful and kind of scary and would work decently well against the Scorchers. But they have a lot to deal with at this point. And Ravagers will be coming up sooner rather than later. Especially if Scalpels are seen, North Chilean G will probably throw Ravagers into the composition and that will just tank everything. And the Scorchers wouldn't die. Oh yeah, I guess there's some new people in the chat. So if you don't, aren't, if you're wondering about the map overlays, I won't explain them right now because stuff is dying. And this is probably going to be where Dorsch doesn't. Okay, one sec. Last moment of truth. Last stand for these scalpels. Are they going to do anything? A little bit. I suppose I should have raised my standards slightly for anything, but they did a thing. Not really the most useful thing, but they did a thing. That was more. That was much more useful. That gave Dorsch some breathing room. Not much, because North Chilean G basically has the map, and Dorsch has two metal extractors and basically just their commander. That's their commander is half of their economy at this point. Exactly half, in fact. Oh, never mind. They just added another solar plant. Not bad use of scythes for scouting, but that was the last scythe. So at this point, it's basically just playing tower defense. Hoping for the best. Getting a Penetrator up, that's not going to be up in time. One minute's way too long. Dorsch is... Well, okay, it's not necessarily too long. If those Scalpels can be used perfectly, then yes. We'll see. It's basically... It's going to come down to Scalpel usage and proper battle tactics. And repairing this warrior will be crucial. Like, seriously, Dorsch, you will want to repair this. This is one of your only combat units left. And Dorsch, unfortunately, does not have radar. They have line of sight on everything coming in here. They didn't have radar in advance to be able to prepare for this. Ooh, not bad splash. And more pretty decent splash, actually. A lot of this... A lot of this is working out quite well. One scalpel does go down, but not if it's taken off all the Scorchers. Or almost all the Scorchers. The warrior, however, is down. And the leveler is providing the biggest pain. And this is where Dorse throws in the towel. The commander about to go down. Doesn't see fit to walk anymore, but it will go down, and Penetrator not complete, Factory down, and everything else. There we go, Dorsch throws in the towel, and that is game. Surprisingly, one of the first games in a long time I've seen where the Commander was the last thing to go. <laughs> Anyhow, so, as I was saying, new people who haven't seen this game before, here's some of the map overlays. So this overlay is an overlay for height. Basically, it switches colors every, I think, 30-something Elmos of elevation. No. Like, five Elmos of elevation. It gives you a bit of an idea of how much of an elevation grade there is. It's not the most useful thing. What's more useful is the pathfinding view. Select any unit. You hit F2. Select any unit. And then you get green if it's easily pathed, red if it's a bit slow, and purple if it's impossible. If it cannot path through there at all. And then the radar thing is just that's line of sight. When you have line of sight view, you see their radar as well. With blue forming the outside edge and green forming the inside edge. Yeah, that's kind of the basics of the 0k overlays. And now, gonna have another game. This time we're gonna have a game between Common Player and Play Helminth. That'll be on Red Comet, a classic map. Stay tuned.